welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, webinar uh, presented to you by Harvest Dental Products and Full Contour Design Centers. My name is Daniel Alter, and this is going to be focused on uh, Trilor Technopolymers as well as the amazing collaboration uh, with Full Contour as an authorized design center. I have Cole Bishop with us who will be um, sharing some of um, his ways of designing and the nuances to be successful with designing this type of restoration. Uh, which is prevent, uh, which provides a significant amount of benefits, not only for the clinician, the patient, as well as the dental laboratory. Next slide. Awesome. So again, for some of you that may not know me, uh, my name is Daniel Alter. I'm a professor in New York City College of Technology in the Department of Restorative Dentistry, as well as an executive editor for Inside Dental Technology. I, um, I'm a former laboratory owner in Long Island of a, a, a mid-size cosmetic implant uh, type of laboratory and understanding the space as well as um, what the benefits and where we can really derive at some significant solutions for not only ourselves again and uh, the clinicians as well as the patient is at the far and foremost um, um, perspective of what we're, we do and what I do as well. So the first question is, what is Trilor? Uh, you've heard of Trilor um, throughout, but you know they're, they're, it's become significantly more popular. It is certainly uh, something that has been, um, it's manufactured in Milan, Italy by BioLoren. And it's a really unique type of polymer, which is a technopolymer uh, that provides a performance matrix with multi-directional glass fiber reinforced. So it is indicated, and in fact, FDA approved as well as in Canada and CE in Europe. But what gives it the incredible strength is the fiber reinforcement, especially the multidirectional glass, because it locks in um, the fiberglass in such a way that it becomes as strong as some of our more static type of materials and restorations, but yet provides a very biomechanic forgiving flexibility. And we'll talk a little bit about the, the actual um, parameters as well as the module elasticity and compare it to some of the competitors. But when you're looking at biomechanics and specifically when you're looking at materials, um, one of the things with implants is that you have to consider and, and be mindful of is how those forces translate down into the implant fixture. And one of the things, and the great thing is, and why I'm excited with this material, Trilor, is that it absorbs a lot of the mastication forces and therefore alleviates it from traveling down into the implant, which the consequence of it traveling down into the implant is the potential of perhaps the implant actually itself failing. So it's almost in some sort of a way is a, a biomechanic insurance in a way that it doesn't translate down into the implant and, and is more forgiving. So what makes Trilor unique? That's a great question. So as I said, you know, the tensile strength is 380 MPAs and the flexural strength is 540 MPAs. Now that's important to notice because it's very similar to what an actual human natural bone does. So if, as we know, obviously, you know, implants are a little different than natural teeth because they're more static and they don't have the ligaments as natural teeth for movement. So the fact that the flexibility allows for a little bit of absorption of forces really provides this material a, um, you know, a, a great as far as performance for a technopolymer. It's, it's certainly head above um, some of the rest. And we'll show you in a little bit what the, um, what the comparisons are. But just want you to know that Trilor is um, both CE, FDA for the USA, as well as in Brazil has certificate as a permanent prosthetic solution, a permanent prosthetic implant solution, which is really, really critical because it's not a temporary and many polymers are, could be a, a temporary in nature, but this is classified and it has been approved by both the European CA and the USA FDA as having a permanent longevity, meaning that it could be in the mouth for as long as the material holds up. So what are some of the comparisons and certainly some of the um, the competing materials in the market. Um, and you can see a clear comparison between Trilor, Trinia, Pecton, Peak, 
Um, and even zirconia and chrome cobalt, as well as titanium is in there. Um, so look at the, the tensile strength, and you can see quite a, a drastic difference with how strong it is. But notice that it's 380 megapascals, which are very similar to what you see with zirconia. Certainly chrome cobalt is a lot harder, um, but zirconia nonetheless, as we know, and we've used it for so many years at this point, and it's been researched and validated, that you see the strength is incredibly um, you know, similar, or rather actually even stronger than what zirconia is. And you can see that it is significantly stronger than some of the competitors that you see, the trinia, the pecton, as well as the peak. Now, the flexural strength is, and the tensile elongation is where you get some of the buffer or the absorption of, of uh, mastication forces. Now, you see here that there's 540 megapascals, where <clears throat> similarly the trinia is, is less as well, and the zirconia is incredibly, incredibly high at 1200 megapascals, as we all know. Now, that becomes something that is very rigid, and especially with implant fixtures and implant supported restorations, you, you need to be mindful and careful of the rigidity. Yes, there's a positivity to rigidity because we want it to last as long as possible, but with you have to be mindful to make sure that there's a balance because sometimes something that perhaps is too hard will actually create a failure for the implant restoration. Now, when it comes to biomechanics and any of these type of restorations, again, you want to make sure that if there is any failure, you you prefer for the failure to happen in a prosthetic rather than the actual implant. So this is a, with Trilor, you you get what I consider the best of both worlds. You get a, a very lightweight, beautiful rest aesthetic restorations while having the, um, you know, the actual material itself flex ever so lightly while still being very strong as you see in the tensile strength. So it's not gonna break, it's not gonna crack on you, it's not gonna snap on you, but it will give a little bit similar to what a natural bone is, but yet provide you with that incredible aesthetic results that you, you can see with Trilor and what Cole is gonna go over with uh, designing it a little bit. So let's talk a little bit about what, what is the dental implant market and what are the drivers. And we've seen a um, successive growth and implant market as well as the CAD market is one of the two largest moving markets in, the, in, um, in, in our space currently. And obviously that's what we're here and that's why I'm so excited about this collaboration with Full Contour because it doesn't get any better. You have the CAD, the design market, where you get the incredible high level of precision repeatably and consistently. But now we're, we're collaborating with a material that is beneficial to the patient, uh, beneficial to the clinician, because it is significantly better, as we said, biomechanics. But the implant market is something that you want to really tap into. And the collaboration with Full Contour, and we'll discuss it more, provides you an, an opportunity and an ability to tap into this market with having the support and the strength and the wisdom and the expertise of Full Contour. So it's growing incredibly fast. Um, and, and one of the leading factors to this is that there's a higher percentage of general practitioners that are placing implants, greater than ever before. And in fact, some of the e e economy, economic environment that we're in right now with the pandemic creates a need for more of GPs or rather GPs have a need for placing more of their implants because they wanna keep it in house. Certainly one of the other drivers is a more predictable with surgical and restorative results. With digital, we're able to create a surgical guide where we are starting from the beginning where it's prosthetically generated um, um, implant surgical guide. So you are in essence, oftentimes with uh, these type of restorative workflows and restorative protocols, um, a patient presents with an issue that you can work up what is the prosthetic results prior to working up the surgical results and then back and into the surgical results. That's what brings a significant level of greater osseointegration, greater, um, um, you know, ability for success for the GPs and therefore greater confidence, which leads to more GPs placing implants, which is great because most of us work in, in, in an environment where there are GPs as well as specialists, but GPs are, are the biggest 
um, customers for dental laboratories. So tapping into that market and, and helping them um, create that revenue stream for themselves not only translates to you as the laboratory, but also translates to the general practitioner while providing a significant greater predictable surgical and restorative results. The obviously it's not needed to be said, but the enhanced precision and fit has been proven through research for years that through digital means and CAD CAM specifically with implant supported uh, prosthetics that CAD CAM provides a significantly better precision and ultimately fit, which is again, a huge benefit. Now, recently I looked up what is the global dental implant market and the growth potential is significant where in 2018, it was a $3.9 billion market, but looking ahead, as little as 10 years, it's, which is 2027, we have a, the potential and what is projected or forecasted as a $7.4 billion. And that's almost like a, a three times what we currently have now. So if you're, doing, if you're noticing in recent years that you're doing more implants than you have before, expect it to grow at an interval of three to four times by 2027, if everything kind of forecasts the same, and that's, you know, and that's where you want to capture the most amount of revenue, because obviously we know that implants, prosthetic, um, implant supported prosthetics require a certain skill set and a certain knowledge. And certainly that's where you come in and your dentists have grown to expect from you. But we have an opportunity, and that's why I'm so excited with Full Contour, because we have an opportunity to tap into their expertise, tap into Cole's minds, if, you know, if I, if we can, and he'll share with you some of the amazing things that, that he can absolutely, and his team can do at Full Contour, but that it becomes an excess or an, an, an additional arm to what you have in your laboratory and your solutions. So it's, you know, when a doctor calls you and says they want to do an all on X, for argument's sake, and you have different choices, whether it's zirconia, whether it's titanium, or even this great biomechanic material called trilor, which is a technopolymer, you don't have to shy away because you may not know the, the sequence or the, or the way of doing so. You can certainly support, I mean, rather, you can certainly lean on Cole and his team at Full Contour uh, to be able to provide that solution. And, and Cole will share with you in a little bit how they go about doing that. So, one thing we have to be mindful, and this is something that I always, uh, you know, kind of allude to, because at the end of the day, who are our customers? Who needs these implant solutions? Yes, it's we directly work with dentists and, and general practitioners and specialists, but in reality, the people that are our customers are patients, and they may be your mother, your father, your boyfriend, girlfriend, husband's wife, uncle, whoever it is. And, you know, they need and they deserve the best that we can give them. And certainly this material allows, as I mentioned before, the best of both worlds because it provides them with a, um, a longevity and a prosthetic that is very, very um, lightweight and provides a great uh, benefit for them. It feels more like their own teeth than they've ever felt before. And one of the ways with Trilor is, and as Cole will show you, designing a what's considered a thimble bar or preparation bar that is then gonna be accepted with a, um, you're gonna be designing similarly uh, right after the, the design and Cole will go over it, individual crowns that will go over those thimbles or over those preparations. And then you complete it with, um, you know, something, a composite for the pink. But as I said earlier, you know, looking at the patients, who are the patients? And even if they're not your mother, father, grandfather, whoever the case may be, they're somebody's and somebody's aunt or uncle, somebody's wife or husband, somebody's child, or somebody's, you know, the patient is, has, you know, the emotional or, um, you know, the characteristics of anybody that we would love and certainly have a lot of love. So they deserve the absolute best that we can provide them. Now, what are some of the benefits? So certainly, as we mentioned, um, the benefits of replacing the unforgiving metal and zirconia framework. When you have both materials, and there's a space for both materials, I'm not knocking, and there's certainly there's a great opportunity for both. And it's up to the, you as a material expert in the laboratory, as well as with your clinician to advise what is the best way of, of fabricating for that 
you know, again, patient, somebody's mother, somebody's father, somebody's grandfather, you want to always think of along the lines of what is the best material option for that patient? And what how can we derive the best benefits for that patient, right? So we want to really make sure now, zirconia and titanium, it, it really has a lot to do with some of the interocclusal space and so on. But you really want to decide and, and now looking at these materials that are so incredibly rigid, what does that do to the implant? How does that flex? It doesn't flex at all. So any of those forces that are not flexing the actual material of either zirconia or titanium allows the, the forces to get transferred down into the implant fixture. Not to mention that oftentimes with metal also, and this is the consequence of sometimes the rigidity, if you're doing a titanium bar with an overdenture, as we all know, there's a significant amount of repairs necessary because the denture teeth tend to either break off or the acrylic break off. And that's just a, as I said earlier, that that's actually a, a consequence of biomechanics. And that's actually a better failure than it transferring down into the implant. So it actually protects with the acrylic, uh, but there's a tremendous amount of repair, which means that there's more need for the patient to see the dentist, um, remove the prosthetic, then they send it to the laboratory in order to repair. They need an intermediary, intermediary uh, prosthetic in the meantime. So it creates a, a little bit of interruption and discomfort for the patient as well as the clinician. Zirconia, much of the same. And again, zirconia, if you get something that's a chip, you know, you're back to square one. If one of your centrals a number eight, for example, the patient by accident, you know, was biting on rocks, I don't know, whatever the case may be. And, you know, the, the one of the, the, the mesial corners on the central broke off. Now, you already have the tie bases glued on, you already have so many things glued on that it becomes very, very difficult. And depending on how long the patient has been wearing it, sometimes it's it's just not conducive to have a very slow burn in order to the contaminants and it's not guaranteed. So many times you would have to start from scratch, which creates a, again, a hardship, not only on the, on, on the laboratory, it certainly creates a hardship on the clinician because it's more appointment time, which translates to more money. And certainly for the patient, because they have to be inconvenienced to come again. Now with this process and this treatment protocol that we're presenting today, if that was the same case and the number eight chipped for argument's sake, a phone call can be made to the laboratory that designed or your laboratory um, the number eight broke off. Mrs. Jones just called and, and the bridge uh, on the bridge number eight broke off. A laboratory can turn around and say, okay, no problem. Appoint Mrs. Jones this afternoon or tomorrow morning. They already have the STL. They can manufacture, fabricate the STL, um, you know, an Emacs within less than an hour and have that crown waiting for Mrs. Jones when she appoints to the, to the dentist. He can just remove that one crown and re-cement the brand new crown. No harm, no foul. Everybody's happy and off they go. The other thing that's great with this being that it's a composite, and we'll talk more towards the end of the presentation, it, it lends itself to be completely intraorally repaired. So with composite, if, if the gum recedes or runs away or anything like that, the dentist can chair side, add some flowable composite in order to repair that or enhance it. Again, it's not a loss of time for the patient or for the clinician, and certainly it's not a, a need for the laboratory to go back and forth. And most of these things, uh, specifically in the technopolymer resin with Trilor, uh, can all be repaired uh, intraorally, which is a huge plus. Um, with that said, it's the, for the holistic uh, patients and dentists out there, it is a metal-free biocompatible solution. Uh, there's adverse reactions sometimes to, um, with some individuals to metals and specifically any materials that are not biocompatible that could develop an allergic reaction or even a sensitivity. Now, if some of you don't know, a sensitivity may not necessarily be an allergic reaction, but it inflames the gums and inflames other areas within the biological or oral environment that creates you know, discomfort for the patient, which with Trilor, it is completely biocompatible. And in fact, it's, it's materials similar to it are used in other parts of the body, whether it's replacing hips and replacing knees and so on and so forth. So it's very biocompatible. It's, it's the body just absolutely loves it. And it creates a, a great synergy. It is affordable, significantly more affordable than what perhaps it would be a zirconia or even a titanium. But one thing that I wanna also mention is the time saving because 
as a laboratory, you're fully in control of this type of material. So whether you send it to call in this team of full contra to design and then you mill it in house, um, or you, de you design and, and mill it, you're, you have the ability of A, having full control over your, your restorative case. You also don't lose any time by sending it to an outsource and you know, waiting the two days, three days, four days, whatever have you, in order to mill. And you, it's, everything is contained within and it's significantly less costly or um, more in, inexpensive than perhaps sending it out as the other materials that are offered. And you still have the benefits of having a high strength uh, lightweight as well as the aesthetic. Now, aesthetics, we try lore, um, originally has come up as, as a bone color, which provides a, a great restorative uh, aesthetic option. Recently now, we're, we're, Harvest just introduced um, now that they have the pink, which provides a, a significantly better outcome for if you want to do a bar with an overdenture, you don't have to worry about opaquing the pink so that the denture acrylic doesn't, show, or the, rather the, the bone color doesn't show through the acrylic. You can absolutely process a, a bar or even a thimble bar out of pink so that it allows you to use less composite and provide you with that color that you're looking for. So the benefits are truly tremendous. And there are multiple paths to fabricating trilow substructure, utilizing your three shape scanner. I mean, certainly um, you can design a bar and these are type of methods that have been designed uh, or utilized, which, you know, some are better than others. Uh, some have used by designing a bar and then attaching attachments to each individual for, for the, uh, the preparations. You can also do an atomical cutback as in an abutment and then have to manually uh, remove any of the materials and, and Cole will speak to that as well, as well as some laboratories have even waxed up in wax and then just copy milled it in order to achieve the same results. I'm happy to say that now with um, we've shared with Cole and his team, what we have a Trilor thimble library uh, that provides actually uh, 28 teeth or 28 preparations in order to make this process significantly easier and Cole can speak to it. But rather than putting individual attachments for 14 units or whatever have you, uh, now you, ha you have a library that you can absolutely achieve that with ease and with, um, with rather speed um, to completely underscore and completely um, streamline your design. Um, it does require expertise and it does require um, know-how and Cole will speak to this, the um, you know, significance of those parameters, but I urge you and, and certainly um, suggest, especially in the very beginning and certainly moving forward, utilizing the expertise of Full Contour, utilizing the expertise of Cole and his team really gets you to what the end results without having the trouble and, and some issues that may arise. They already have gone through it all. They've already seen it all. They know what works and sometimes what doesn't work. And that's that's the, the benefit of utilizing a company like Full Contour or outsourcing for this type of restoration, because you can rest assured that they've done so many of these type of cases that their design will stand up in the parameters. And certainly there now their system is, um, you know, with the DME uh, from Harvest Dental, it provides also the parameters to, by which uh, to make sure that the trilor is long lasting and sustains within the patient, uh, the patient's mouth and the protocols. So I'm really, really excited about this. This is really um, a tremendous collaboration. I'm happy to be a part of it. And um, with that said, Cole, Thank you so much for joining us today. And this is Cole Bishop, and he'll introduce himself as well. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Daniel. Appreciate that. So um, as Daniel said, my name is Cole Bishop. I've been with Full Contour now for about two years. Um, I've been in the lab industry for a little over 12 years. I started off as a dental lab technician working on wax and metal substructure. And I would say about the last six to seven years of my career, my main focus has been on the digital side of things inside of 3Shape. So I've joined the, the team over here at Full Contour to kind of bring in some new indications, some more difficult, um, challenging indications that we are all seeing a major need for in the industry. Um, of course, hybrids is something that we're, we're starting to see really pick up. So I saw that major need for that. And um, that was one of my very first uh, big projects was working on that to start building a, a protocol around that for our designers in order to you know, know and understand the, the in-depth details that go into to these kind of things. 
Um, for some of you that, don't, that aren't too familiar with us, um, we're, we're, again, we're Full Contour Design Services. Um, we design 24 hours a day, six days a week, pretty much anything that's involved in three shape we design. So anything from a single unit posterior crown all the way up to, you know, full arch, double arch, uh, all on X hybrids. We work with clear liners, dentures, uh, guided surgery, RPDs, um, anything that, that has to do with implants. Um, we've also launched a couple new exciting indications this past year, our Lucid premium anterior design, which is our more high aesthetic design team that works on those type of cases. So it's it's been a, a very exciting year for us. This is our, our team here at, at in Phoenix. Our, our corporate offices are located here in sunny Arizona. Um, each indication that we have, we have a, a customer support specialist that's able to handle any questions or concerns. So, you know, you can always feel free to reach out to us and you'll always be directed to a customer support specialist that'll be able to handle any of your questions going forward. Um, we do have three different design centers. We have a location in Costa Rica, we have a location in Kiev, and then we also have a location in Shenzhen, China. And we have, you know, all of our different designers are, are trained in different, different areas, depending on, on what that location is. So. We're, we're here to, to help you guys out on that. So one thing I did wanna go over as well is we, we, over the years, we've created design guides for each one of our indications. We, we saw that there was a major need for high level, you know, detailed communication from the customer to our designers. So we've, we've started everything from, you know, our splint design guide, our lucid design guide, which is our, again, our high aesthetic anterior offering our denture design guide. We have our regular crown and bridge design guide, uh, smile design. And then also of course today, what we're gonna be going over is our all on X hybrid design guide. Now you'll see um, this, of course, this looks like a lot, but all of these different codes that we have available inside each one of these design guides are, are available on our, our full contour platform. So when you drag and drop a case over to our platform, it's gonna bring up whatever guide you plan on, whatever, whatever that uh, indication is tied to, whether it's a crown and bridge or a hybrid, from there, you'll be able to click the different options in order to communicate what you're looking to achieve on your design. Of course, today we're gonna be going over the all on X prepped hybrid, and I'm gonna touch on our, our monolithic hybrid as well. Um, as Daniel stated, one thing that's that's been super beneficial with our partnership is but with, with Harvest and Trilor is the ability to really dive in and see, you know, the different uh, parameters and material standards that, that fall along the line with this, with this uh, library that we've been fortunate enough to work with. Um, it's been an awesome, awesome journey to, to, you know, work with the designers on my end. I've gone in and, and hand selected a group of our most uh, experienced designers that already have quite a bit of experience in this in this area, but we've, we've fine-tuned things. Um, we've gone through a, a very in-depth process on how to evaluate each case so that each time a case is submitted, we can you know take that all the way from A to Z, all the important factors that are involved and our designers are very well aware of, of you know, the understanding of what needs to be uh, taken care of on those type of cases. Um, we all know uh, when it comes to hybrids, this, this can be, in my opinion, probably one of the most difficult uh, design indications that are involved inside of free shape software. I mean, you have everything from ridge lap problems, tissue concavities, implant location challenges, um, tissue border placement, screw access holes, cantilever lengths, material standards, bite correction, tissue pressure, desired anatomy, anatomy, all these different things that we run into. And it's important to know that we have, we at Full Contour have considered all of these things as something that has to be individually uh, looked into on every single case. It's very important to know and understand all of these items in order to factor in what needs to be done to have a successful outcome. So that's, again, one thing that we've, we've really gone into uh, creating this evaluation process where our designers, as soon as they receive a case for the all on X indication, 
They take the time to do a deep evaluation, you know, look at the scans, check out the cantilever lengths that they're working with based on where those implant locations are, um, the material thickness standards, how much vertical we have, all those things are extremely important. And um, as Daniel mentioned before too, it's it's been awesome because with this material, as long as your order is set up with the Trilor material and we're utilizing this library, it gives us a better understanding of how to evaluate this case. And we know we can stay within those parameters, whether it's, whether it's you know the minimum thickness parameters, if we have a, a limited space on the bite or if it's, you know, depending on where those implants are placed again with the cantilever length. So all that stuff is, is, is uh, taken into consideration by our designers. And if we do run into any kind of problem, we will definitely provide you with images and a description as to what, what our concerns are. And then from there, we can address any kind of action items on, on how we want to move forward on that. So again, that's it's something that we, we take a lot of pride in and we make sure we, um, Eliminate that that um, uncertainty on your end if if you're just not quite sure if this case will will you know be successful for this type of restoration we will do that for you guys. Um, as far as order requirements go, it's we we do require four things for you guys to send us a case. And again, the 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 reason for this is because we need to have this information. It's important for us to know in order to again evaluate the case. So. Uh, number one, we need a complete three shape order. So we need to have these cases set up inside of three shape and with the proper, you know, implant locations, uh, implant kit, all that needs to be spot on for it to uh, translate into our system. Um, we don't accept STLs and we don't create orders for this indication. So that's that's number one. Um, number two, it's important to know what type of uh, gingival you're going to select on this. If you're going to go with something like you want, want like a, a standard slight cutback or you want to go um, full full anatomy on your gingiva, just make sure that, that whatever you're specifying that that translates inside the three shape order so that once we receive it on our end, we'll know where to take it from there. Um, number three, either the length of centrals or a pre-op scan. We need those, uh, that basically gives us the ability to have a starting point with this. Um, so for some of you that are already familiar with full contour, uh, we have our lucid offering again that I've talked about. This specific uh, indication, the all on X, will go to our lucid team and it actually goes to a smaller part of the lucid team. So it's kind of our best of the best and our, our that are you know taking the time to really evaluate these cases. So uh, we we allow you to use the lucid codes when it comes to the final crown restoration. So again, that's why we off we need to have either the length of centrals or a pre-op scan at, for by default in order for us to move forward with the case and then lastly of course the material used for the final restoration and again that's important for us to know so that we can you know evaluate the case know and understand what what kind of parameters we're working with and you know be able to move forward and either provide you with you know some advice on if we don't feel comfortable with the design for whatever reason, we will definitely place that on hold and provide you with images, or we'll also still provide you with the evaluation images so that you can see those, whether it's you know a pass or, or we place it on hold. So how do, how do I get started? So I'm gonna kind of walk you guys through you know, the, the process of all on X uh, prepped and then our standard all on X monolithic. So as I said, as I mentioned before, it's it's pretty simple. The first thing you want to do is once you create that three shape order, and you just need to be um, exported, and then you'll have that that entire zip file. You'll go ahead and drop that onto our platform. You can either use the button if you have the button installed inside of three shape, or you can simply drag it from a folder onto our our platform. Um, from there, typically, depending on, on how the order was set up, a lot of the times it's going to auto parse. So you'll see over here on the top right where it says design type. We have all these different design type indications. And let's say uh, you sent, so submitted a, a simple single unit coping, for example. Um, our, our platform automatically reads what's in that order and it'll auto parse and it'll know that that's a coping. So from there, you'll be able to pull up 
the design guide that we've created that has all the different codes that are tied to that coping. Um, of course, that's going to be the same thing for you know, night guards or anything to do with abutments, whatever that case may be, those will pull up for you. So we, we, we've uh, sectioned it out to make it easy for you to, to go through those design guide codes. Now, of course, today we're going to be talking about the, the Trilor uh, thimble style prep and then also um, our monolithic design. So I'm, I've selected our all on X hybrid prep here. From there, that's gonna open up our design guide. Um, as you can see on this, the very first thing that we, we ask for is that material selection. So in this case, of course, we're gonna be working with Trilord. That'll again, give our designers, they'll know, okay, this is Trilord. This is the material we need to you know, follow the standards for specific cantilever lengths, material thickness, all of that will be factored in. So it's very important for you to provide us with, with the material on that. Um, our next option here is our gingiva border placement. Um, this, I, this is kind of where I got into the details on that pre-op. So by default, everything that you see that's, that's highlighted in green that says default, we're gonna be following that if you don't select any code. So we wanna give you the option to, to you know, fully customize your designs, but at the same time, if you're just not sure, we'll, we'll take care of you guys. We'll take that for you. We'll make sure we you know, evaluate the case and, and provide you with a, a, an accurate design. So we have these two different options here for border placement. Again, uh, by default, we'll follow the, the pre-op or you have this border placement where it's gonna be basically placed ideal on the ridge with no ridge lapping, no ridge lapping and the implant openings will be roughly 0.5 to 1.5 millimeters distance from the implant border uh, to the outer border is gonna be one to 1.5 millimeters. Um, then from there, we move into our all on X hybrid prep placement. So we have a couple different options here. Um, by default, our prep placement will be dictated by that pre-op. So we're going to basically be fitting the, the um, amazing Trilor thimble library inside that, that arch that's going to be, you know, basically um, dictated by, by the pre-op. So we're going to size those preps in there. We're, we're taking into consideration a few different things here. Margin depths, of course, um, also path of insertion. So it's another, it's, that's also another thing to, to kind of be um, aware of possibly prior to sending the case um, for a uh, prepped hybrid. Maybe let us know whether or not you're gonna be going with single unit crowns on this, or you're gonna be you know, doing like two posterior bridges and an anterior bridge. Sometimes that kind of com communication can be very useful that way when we're, you know, Placing those preps, we can take into consideration um, anything that has to factor in with, with um, path of insertion. So then we have this HPM uh, option here where you can uh, place your mark. You can, you can provide us with a, with a value of where you want that margin placed. So typically, again, by default, we're going to just place it slightly below the, the margin of the uh, pre-op so that you have that extra, you know, little bit of extra room for whatever you're planning to stack on that for your for your final tissue. And then this last option here is our prep placement set to X value in reference to the pre-op. So that's going to basically be your distance from the prep to your to your um, final crown. So whatever whatever you want that thickness to be. So then we move into our um, prepped X gingiva. I mean this this option here, the P GCP is basically if you're wanting to do any kind of cutback or anything on the tissue, if you want to have a little more room to add some additional character, you can do that. You just need to give us that value and we'll, we'll accommodate for that. Um, then we get into desired tissue pressure. So you'll have a few different options here on, on how, how hard you want that pressure to be on the intaglio surface. So you have those three options there. Um, the follow pre pre-op wax up options. This is mainly, this kind of is more so geared towards Lucid and our monolithic design, but it's just basically giving us an indication of whether um, we're gonna be following that pre-op exactly or using it as a guide when we go to do the final crowns. And then lastly, we have manual screw access holes. So let's say you scan the case with tie bases rather than using like a standard implant kit. 
um, you're definitely going to want to go with with this option down here so that we can know where to put those those manual screw access holes. Um, now I kind of want to go over a few of the different design code options that we have for our monolithic design as well. Um, some of these, of course, are going to be the same as what we just walked through. But um, again, since this is a monolithic design, as you can see, again, some of you guys that are familiar with our Lucid offering, you'll see that we have implemented all of our Lucid codes available for this offering. So not only are you getting our, our um, Lucid team that's designing the cases, but you're also getting our Lucid hybrid team, which is uh, an awesome combination. Um, very proud of that team. It's It's been my my pride and joy of, of working with this. So, so yeah, you see that we have these six different options here as far as the library goes. Um, what you see in green is gonna be default. So again, if you don't select something, we're just gonna be following that default. Also, if you have a particular code, or excuse me, a particular library that you, that you would want us to design with that's not on this guide, you can always just let us know what that is and we'll either import that DME or we'll make sure we we uh, could accommodate you that for that. And then we get into occlusal uh, placement for byte. Again, by default, we're gonna be following the uh, pre-op provided, but you do have a few different options here to deviate in either direction, depending on where those implants are placed or if the patient or doctor has, you know, a different opinion on, on how they want that, of course, we can, can accommodate for that. Um, from there, we get into our, our line angles, surface texture and lingual anatomy. These are just some, a few different uh, categories here where you can, you know, get a little more in depth with how broad or narrow you want those line angles, uh, surface texture, you know, just how much detail you want on that facial aspect. That's gonna be the same for the lingual, lingual anatomy. Again, you see that the uh, defaults are highlighted in green. Our next option here is smile styles. So this is something that I feel really sets us apart. Um, we have these six different options to really characterize your incisal edges. So let's say, you know, you really love the, the cap library, but you want a little bit more of a feminine look to it, then of course you pick that cap library and then go with, with your SS5 and we're going to round those incisal edges and kind of give it that little, a little more characterization to, to you know, individualize that. And from there, we have a few different midline placement options. So if you have, uh, you know, a, a customer that wants to maintain their natural diastema, we can do that. Or if you want to move the, the midline in either direction, you have those options as well. Um, necking, by default, will neck the case if this is more so geared towards our standard Lucid. But um, I mean, most of the times when you're dealing with all on X, it's going to be uh, gingiva. So this necking won't really be considered. But we do often see cases come in where, where customers want to add their own gingiva. So this is just something to, to keep in mind on that. Gingiva border placement, again, that's going to be, um, by default, we're going to be making sure there's no ridge lapping or anything like that to worry about. Um, again, that's part of the evaluation process that you'll see. And then we get into gingiva cutback types. So this is important to know that this has to be set up correctly in the three-shape border in order for us to accommodate for a cutback. So if you do want it to be cut back, make sure that that's set up that way. That way our designers will know, you know, how much to cut it back in order to, to make sure we're achieving that for you guys. Um, from there, we get into tissue definition. So you have a few different options there on how much detail you want to be involved in that. And then of course, our desired tissue pressure that we already went over and our uh, three different options for pre-op or wax up. And then again, something I kind of touched on with the all on X prep is if this is a, a case with scanned tie bases, then of course you have the option to, um, to select this code down here at the bottom as long if you want uh, screw access holes. So after you submit the case and select your codes, this is gonna be kind of what you'll, what, what it'll look like. Um, as you can see at the top left, you can enter a name, any, any additional instructions that you have on the case, you can also enter those there. Um, this is a 24 hour turnaround time. And we also have the option here, design, uh, require design approval. Basically um, that gives you the ability to fully take a look at it, um, make sure you evaluate the case, you're happy with the order, 
before you actually, you know, download it from there. Um, one thing I did want to touch on as far as the, the all x prepped hybrid with the Trilord, uh, this is a two-step process. So it's important to know kind of how this workflow is on our end. Um, first, of course, what we do is we, we take your pre-op, we take your scan, we take your, your complete three-shape order, um, all the codes that you have utilized for that. And we create this, your, your restoration based on our evaluation process. Um, from there, you we'll send that, we'll put that case back on the platform. After the design is completed and verified by you, at that point, you can decide whether or not you want to um, go ahead and move forward with the final crowns. Or if you have any adjustments you need to make, you always can just put that in a redesign and we'll make those adjustments for you right away. But we do need to have the case um, evaluated on your end and, and verified before we move into the crown process. So. Um, what I'm seeing mostly is that the best way to do this is after you're, you've okayed the design and, and everything looks great, you go ahead and copy and append that design to the scan. And then from there, you'll go back into it and recreate the order, adjust the order so that you can um, set it up for your final crowns, whether that's going to be, like I said, mentioned earlier, you know, um, two posterior bridges and an anterior bridge or all single units. That just depends on, on however you want to select that. Um, of course, under this, you could also just take that final design and from there, you could take it from there and, and do your own design. I do, um, I do want to mention, I, I, I encourage you guys to send this back for, for final crowns through full contour. Um, one, one reason why is because you will get the lucid team. So you're going to have that detailed anatomy. Um, the person that designed the, the bar is going to be very familiar with, with what we need to do in order to achieve success on the final crowns. So it's, I mean, give it, give it a chance. The, the Lucid offering is, is amazing. And I think it fits really well with, with what Harvest and Trilor has, has created with this Thimble Bridge process. Um, I did kind of want to show you guys a quick video on how to copy an append a case, just so you kind of have a good idea. So basically, after you receive the case and import it back into your system, what I like to do is go ahead and, and 3D preview that order. From here, you can just kind of get a really good, you know, indication of how everything looks. Make sure your tissue pressure is right, even though we are going to have um, quality control images with all this information. But again, it's good to, to see it in your own hands as well. So you can kind of see, you know, a few different things, get a, get a better understanding of what it looks like from there. Once you're happy with it, you don't need to redesign. You can go ahead and go to copy, uh, copy and append design to preparation scan. And what that's going to do is that's going to bring this up here. So from here, of course, you're going to need to adjust your, your order. So I like to just go ahead and clear all, select the units that are involved. In this case, we're just going to go with standard single unit uh, crown design. So once that's selected, basically hit OK and you're good to go. And it basic three shape is going to treat this as a new order. And we're going to be utilizing that Trilore uh, preparation arch as our, our prep teeth. So from there, you can just go ahead and right click. You can 3D preview this again. You can see that that's all one solid scan now. So now that once this case is submitted to our platform, our designers are going to basically treat this as individual preps for their final design. And of course, they're going to utilize that uh, pre-op to, to um, work for their their final crown design. Go ahead and export the order as a file. And then from there, you can just throw that on your desktop. Or of course, if you have the full contour button, you can also send it through the button. And then drop it on the platform and select Lucid as the final crown design. And we'll take it from there. Another thing I really wanted to touch on that is uh, an amazing thing that we have available too is our doctor approval app. So each case that we we uh, work on for 
for hybrids, we have this amazing doctor approval app that we give available to you and your doctors. So you can basically send them a link and they can access the case prior to manufacturing to see you know, if there's any changes that need to be made or anything like that. So I'm gonna show you this quick video, basically get an email simply to your mobile device like this. Um, from there, you're gonna come in and copy that access token. And then you'll see that there's a link here that you can click on that link, open up your browser. Once you're inside, you'll see that it prompts you for, to enter a, an access token here. So you'll go ahead and paste that in here, hit submit. Um, then you'll go ahead and agree to the terms in here. And again, all these options that you're gonna see on this, on this app are also available on the actual platform as well, but this is just you know that doctor link so you can, so you can send this to them as well. So we, we um, include a, a 3D video of every single hybrid case that just does like a quick overview of, of you know, each angle, just to kind of give you, a, you know, an indication of what that looks like. We also include the STL file viewer for the R hybrid cases, so you can get a good glimpse of that as well. And then in addition to that, we also have our quality control images that you can sort through and have, have your doctor kind of check through these. Um, one thing I was mentioning before, we include every single image that relates to our evaluation process inside here. And that's even if your case passes or we have to place it on hold. So we want to make sure, you know, we give you really good in-depth images so you can get a, a great indication of how this restoration turned out prior to manufacturing. Um, each case will also come with a designer tag so you can kind of see who, who designed that case. Um, from there, let's, if you can um, either approve and manufacture or hit redesign, if it goes into redesign, it basically will prompt you for a reason why. Um, if you approve and manufacture, you can just go ahead and enter doctor name. Um, the doctor is going to, you know, validate that he approves that. And then from there, we can see on our end that it's been approved and ready to go. So um, again, this, this is a, our all-inclusive uh, fee per arch includes, it's $199 per arch. Um, that includes our all NX hybrid design guide. It comes with our all NX design team, of course, our, our very you know, in-depth trained team that's gonna be handling these cases. Um, this also comes with all of our anterior lucid codes are included, uh, any number of implants, four or more. And then of course, the video summary with the doctor approval app. Uh, one thing I did kind of want to touch on, this 199 per arch is, that is the total cost for for the the pec, or the um, the trialer bridge by itself. If you do want to add crowns to that, you'll simply just go in and um, after you copy the pinned and you validate that, you'll submit that back in and then you'll be charged for the standard rate for the, the Lucid uh, crowns on top of that. Awesome, guys. I'm going to turn the time back over to Daniel, and um, he's going to touch on a few more things, and then, yeah, we'll, we'll keep moving here. Excellent. Excellent, Cole. Thank you so much again, and, and your team, and, and hope, you know, one of the things that demonstrated from this webinar is the amount of thoughtfulness and, you know, the focus that was placed on this by Full Contour and your team, where in reality, it's, it's, you've validated everything, you've worked through everything. And, you know, and for laboratories watching this, it's, you know, certainly depending on, you know, the size and how big and so on and so, but full contour, especially for this type of prosthetic, I mean, they've thought of all. It, this this is a, a, you know, I hate saying bulletproof, but it's really <laughs> something that they've really, and, and you saw, I mean, and Cole laid it out so wonderfully where everything that, is a consideration and to be successful with these type of restorations have been thought of by the team of Full Contour. So thank you again. And it's it's a, you know, for laboratories, it's, you know, it could be something that, you know, whether if, you, depending on if you have the expertise in a laboratory or what have you, but you can have this, this is an extension of your laboratory. This is something that, you know, you can feel confident to go to your clinicians and new or existing and say with confidence that you can provide this type of service and this type of product because 
you do have a very skilled technician calling his team with a full contour, which, you know, gives you that added level of confidence. And, you know, so now you have the confidence in the material, you have the confidence in, in the designing and, you know, all the way through. So thank you again, Cole, and, and full contour. What we're going to be talking about now for the, the remaining of the, um, you know, is once you get the SDL, the design from uh, Cole and his team at full contour, what do you do? So there's certainly, there's several options. Now, uh, Full Contour is an authorized design center for uh, Trilor by Harvest Dental. Uh, there is uh, the uh, opportunity to outsource, if you want, the milling to milling centers. And, and please do check the, the Harvest Dental website as well as Full Contour uh, websites for who are the authorized Trilor milling centers. So you can certainly outsource the design in, in order to manufacture it. Or if you want, uh, you can certainly mill Trilor in-house. And Currently, it's been validated by both the Roland Mills uh, DGA as well as VHF. So, you know, options. I'm all about options. You have the opportunity to certainly outsource through a uh, authorized Trilor milling center, or you can, um, you know, complete or mill in house, depending on what it is that you want to do. Um, you know, depending on how many mills you have, depending on what kind of mills and so on and so forth, you know, milling the trilo bar and then so may take, you know, a, a little bit of time in your own mill. So it's, it's a question of whether you want to occupy your mill with, you know, milling a, a bar or you want to just authorize and the price that, you know, for, for design is just tremendous call. I mean, honestly, it's, it's something that really is a great service for the industry. And I thank you for that because, for that price, it's it's just it's a no-brainer to go ahead and send it to Full Contour and Cole's team. And honestly, I can I can vouch again for for his team of, of, as having the, the the highest level of um, you know CAD design and and the things that they can do is just remarkable. And and that becomes an extension of your laboratory. Now you can accomplish that too. So similarly, whether you want to outsource to a Trilor milling center, which again they are authorized by Harvest Dental, or if you want to mill. Um, you know, in-house VHF or Roland have validated uh, their mills to be able to mill or grind um, their uh, the trilor material, and there are more coming soon that we're, that Harvest is working with right now in order to validate. So the opportunities, the options are there, and you can really, you know, the bottom line is the, the trilor has or this type of treatment protocol has been very very popular in Europe, and it's really becoming even more so popular here in the US. And dentists are really looking for this as a, a great momentum and a great opportunity to treat their patients because it is a third of the weight of what their counterpart zirconia is. Um, and for those other benefits that I've mentioned to you as far as the, the ability to repair, as far as the lightweight, as far as biocompatibility, patients forget that they even have it. And you also have one of the things that I wanted to mention, you also have the ability of those crowns that are going on top of it to be significantly more aesthetic than some of the zirconia counterparts, which again, it's options. I, several people have, you know, they use lithium disilicate, Emacs, or they even use zirconia if they choose to, or any of the assortment, whatever. I've, some people have even uh, built up some composite crowns on top of it. Depending on how you want to treat it, the, the options are there. But you can rest assured that not only the design, but the material has been validated by FDA for, for permanent um, solution, implant supported solution. So some things and, and some attributes, and we'll talk about how to actually, once you get the bar and you get the crowns or the design, uh, you know, milled, what happens then? Some things I'm going to show you some aesthetics that some of our partners at laboratories have completed some remarkable um, um, restorations. But one thing that really is, you know, I just wanted to point out is if you look here at this by Jay Black, look where the access holes are coming out of. And you see that the one is behind the lateral here and the other one's behind the cuspid on the patient's left. Those become um, a non-significant where if, if it was in a zirconia, obviously it would be an issue. Where here now you can have those access holes. You can also have access holes underneath the uh, restorations. So when you send it out to a dentist, if, if the access holes are under your restorations, there are two options. You can either create a screwmentable whereby there's a hole through that crown and then cement it for that or bond it for that dentist, or some dentists would rather not and just have that one not bonded when you send it to them and they'll 
you know, torque it and bond it into place depending on what the dentist wants. But again, <clears throat> the benefit of this, as you see here with Jay Black's case, is that the access holes are retrievable all the time. And even when they're completely coming out of, uh, you know, on, on the labial or the buccal surface, it doesn't compromise the, the aesthetics of it. Here you see both access holes are very, very much on the labial, but once inserted in, the dentist torques it down, then puts a little bit of, of tape inside and seals it with some flowable composite so that they can retrieve it later on. But as far as the aesthetics, as far as the cosmetics of the patient, uh, they're, they're none the wiser. They get something that is very lightweight, very aesthetic, individual restorations, as we said. Uh, or as Cole said, you can do an anterior bridge and two, three, two posterior bridges, whichever way you and your doctor have decided, the opportunity is there to create a very lightweight, biocompatible and incredibly aesthetic restoration that will long last for the patient's time. Um, and patients absolutely love it. So how do you go about doing that? And this is a flow chart uh, of a way and on the Harvest Dental, um, website, there's a frequent question, uh, frequent answer, questions and answers rather, I'm sorry, uh, as well as uh, some of these documents. But in reality, it's very simple. The reason being is, again, uh, Trilor is comprised of fiberglass and, and resin composite, right? So it's, it's approximately 75% fiberglass, which gives it that incredible strength and resiliency rather, and the and 25% of composite or resin, whatever have you. So that lends itself to, you know, like, like to bond to likes, right? So it's not two foreign things. If you're bonding either composite or acrylic, being that they're within the, the resin or the polymer or the plastics kind of um, group, they really bond incredibly well where they become almost as strong as being one once you bond it. But depending on the process and the way you want to do it, but this is the four steps. You, you first and foremost want to make sure that you sandblast it um, using disposable aluminum um, oxides at 50 microns or 110 in Europe, they also have offer at two bars. And all you're doing is you're creating the mechanical retention to the trilor, which you'll then also have to do for if you're doing the titanium, you, you know, uh, uh, tie bases, you want to sandblast the titanium also before, but then you want to clean it. You want to clean with air and completely dry and oil free. And quite honestly, as I said, you know, and just uh, for full transparency, this bonds really, really well. Whenever there's an issue with bonding, it's typically either the, um, the air has oil in it or some kind of contaminant or the primer is perhaps dated or, or isn't good. But otherwise, if everything that the protocol is followed according to the manufacturers, the bonding strength is completely and incredibly strong. Then you wanna treat with silane to allow to evaporate three to five minutes. So the trilor as well as the crowns and then apply the acrylic resin or composite directly onto the trilor. You should use primer if there is composite. And again, it's something that comes in the composite kit as well as you should treat, the, depending on the crown, lithium disilicate or whatever have you, as though you're bonding. And again, some dentists would prefer to bond it chair side, some dentists would prefer for the laboratory to send it to them bonded. Whichever way it is, um, it's, the trilor lends itself to bonding really, really well, both the composite as well as the um, sequential crowns that will fit over it. Uh, you just wanna follow the manufacturers, um, you know, the bonding, kids that you have. Uh, there's certain, we uh, at Harvest um, Dental and the website, there are recommendations as to uh, what kind of composite primers and what kind of bonding agents, but nonetheless, most are, are appropriate for this type of, um, you know, restorative protocol. And being that it's like materials, it lends itself to some significant, you know, strength and bonding uh, as though they're, they really become almost indefens in, indispensable where you can't break the two up in, in a great way. So, um, but definitely the, you know, you would need to prime either the, on the metal for the tie bases uh, and bond that with a, an appropriate primer and then do the same for the crowns and then just layer. I personally use GC Gradia, which gives me some great results, but there are plenty of other composites that are really, really wonderful. The point is, you know, most likely laboratories already have all these materials. So you don't have to necessarily go and purchase. You really, it's it's a plug and play whereby, you know, if you get this kind of case, which is a very profitable and certainly a revenue generating, you can accept that case, 
scan it, populate it in three shape, as Cole said, send it off to full contour, get it back. You can decide whether you want to mill it in house or you want to send it out to outsource the crowns as well, or you can decide to mill the crowns in house and send the trilor out or whatever variation you have. And then when it comes to the laboratory, you can assemble everything together for an incredibly uh, very high uh, profitability. So that's what I'm excited about, the, that this collaboration and this partnership with between Harvest Dental and Full Contour provides the laboratories an opportunity to reap some great benefits to, to their revenues, to their profitability, and to their growth momentum uh, in general. So the process becomes significantly easier and you're assembling it, but notice everything throughout and everything that Cole said, you are still in control. You are still validating. It's what your dentists have come to expect from your laboratory, the quality of from your laboratory. And, and I would say sometimes even better with the expertise of Full Contour and Cole's team, you can really achieve a, a great restorative revenue generating uh, implant supported restoration in a great way. And your doctors will absolutely love it because patients absolutely love it. And it becomes something that's repairable um, in, in chair side and the patients don't even feel it, it's so lightweight. So showing you some more remarkable aesthetic results you can see here from the, uh, to the, on, the, uh, on my left, um, you see a, a, a bridge with, with composite as well as the crowns courtesy of Lee Culp, as well as Emmanuel Riccomini um, has done. It. Again, you can see it's a little bit different on the bottom here, which I'll get into in a second. Um, there is an opportunity to utilize Trilore without digital if any of you are analog. Uh, and haven't gravitated yet to digital, you're still able to utilize the, the trilor material that does sell in an analog as well. Now, just to sort of a recap again, to remind everybody, and it just, there, it, it, it is the benefits for the patient because at the end of the day, we are all here for the patients, whether it's laboratory, whether it's us, you know, whether it's Harvest Dental products, the full contour, without the patient, none of this would happen, right? So we're constantly, the focus of everybody is always the benefit of the patient. We wanna be able to provide the patient the best you know, product, the best service, the best material so that they can have a, you know, it's a life changing type of prosthetic. You know, most people that, that have an all on X have gotten to that point because of different variables that happen in their lives. And I can't tell you enough, and I'm sure you've all have been in that situation where patients sometimes even hide their mouth because they're not comfortable with the aesthetics. The moment you give you, you, you change the paradigm shift with them and you give them a full arch of implant supported. I mean, my God, they light up. You've affected their life in such a positive way that, you know, they certainly feel it and they get emotional. If any of you have had the benefit of, of being chair side when one of these or these type of restorations are delivered, the emotions are just incredible because it's so life changing for that patient. And remember, if that patient is not your mother or your father, it's somebody's mother or father, it's somebody's grandfather, it's somebody's uncle, boyfriend, girlfriend. So affecting those people in life, you know, is, is a positive beyond just the financial rewards. It's beyond just the professional development. It's the ability to touch a human being in a positive way and changing their lives in a very dramatic and positive way that they feel better about themselves. At that point, it changes everything for them, whether it's their personal life, their professional life, and so much more uh, than what they've had before. So I just want you to keep that with you because that's something that drives me as well. Um, but it is a metal-free biocompatible implant solution. Again, metal-free. It's biocompatible. So it's incredibly welcoming in the, in the mouth and dentists will attest to it too because these technopolymers um, don't get rejected by the patient like some other materials do. It's very lightweight, as I said. So it actually eliminates headaches. And that's some of the things that with research has come about with the full contour zirconia type of uh, hybrids where they, they just weigh a ton. Uh, and some patients actually have reported headaches because of having very heavy uh, zirconia. Obviously it depends on the size of the arch and the interdental space. But nonetheless, if you're looking at apples to apples, a finished trilor arch weighs at approximately, with the crowns and composite, 21 grams, where compared to a zirconia arch, same exact thing at 51 grams. So it's almost two and a half to three times the weight of what the zirconia is. So 
once a dentist and you know and sometimes i remember there were studies and videos of a dentist kind of holding both in their arms one arch of zirconia one arch of trilor with the teeth and then giving it to the patient and just the the reaction is amazing with them saying oh my god what a difference that that little bit can make and then putting it in their mouth and they're carrying it around and certainly it's screwed in but it the lightweight makes it feel like it's their own teeth uh plus the flexibility of it and again when i say flexibility it doesn't flex it's very strong but it just absorbs um the the forces in such a positive way similar to what a natural human bone uh does now, a remarkable case recently done by Jack Morano here, you can see, and again, using the trilor, and this is a, um, a lithium disilicate, I believe, um, that was uh, performed for a double arch, uh, both with trilor. And, you know, you can see that the aesthetic results and the um, what the outcomes can be are just absolutely magnificent. And, and again, utilizing digital means gives you the precision, gives you the consistency. So if you're you're a little weary and not sure whether or not, you know, the, um, the implant supported kind of space, if you're comfortable with lean on Cole and, and their team, because they've done so many, they know, and, and as Cole just, you know, eloquently went through it, they've thought of 20 plus criteria or parameters uh, that will affect your, you know, that could potentially affect your restorations. And they've solved all those kind of parameters. So lean on them. Um, Cole would be more than happy to support any questions questions and anything that, but you want to capture that revenue stream and you want to offer that to your clinicians, your dentists, your dentist may be doing these type of restorations or perhaps doing all on four and, and in zirconia or titanium. And they're just not aware because you haven't spoken to them about this type of material, but the benefits are tremendous. And by a laboratory you know, speaking to their clinicians about this type of material, they perceive it as you're offering a product or a solution that will enhance their practices, will enhance their the experience for the patient, um, whether it's aesthetically or biocompatibility, lightweight, or just the, fun, the, the function of being able to complete these type of restorations aesthetically. And the recall becomes a, a, a part of what to speak with with clinicians because the recall becomes significantly less because of there's no need to for uh, repairs. Many of these things can be repaired chairside uh, for the clinician. So as I said, if a crown breaks, if the, the, the gingiva resorbs for any reason, these are all quick and easy fixes that don't require weeks on end. We're going back to the, to the laboratory for repairs and multiple visits to the dentist. These are all um, repaired very easily. So not only is it biocompatible, not only is it lightweight, it's more aesthetic, but it just becomes a win-win for the laboratory and certainly for the clinician and ultimately for the patient. Now, Trilor is full of, of potential. You know, we've spoken a lot about all on X, but other folks are utilizing this material uh, for, for multiple reasons. So at the very top left, you see this, this is how Trilor is being, uh, it's called Trilor Arch, and it's sold in three wafers, as you see there with varying sizes from three to four, uh, four and a half, all the way to six. Uh, depending on what you want to do. I, there's some gentlemen that do the chrome kind of um, surgical guide that utilize this in, in a big way. They sneak it in underneath the surgical guide. Uh, some analog laboratories that perhaps are not digital can still, you know, benefit from this material. It is manually ground uh, with a handpiece, but nonetheless, um, it is embedded. Now, it's not, it's not indicated yet for, uh, well, it's not indicated because of the thickness for thimble. So for the purpose of this webinar for thimble type of bridges, it, it is digital. But if it's just a, a wraparound uh, bar, you can still develop or, and fabricate a, um, through the trilor arch uh, with those wafers. And obviously, you can see what we, Cole and I spoke about um, is the thimble type of bridge as well as you can digitally do a bar as well. It doesn't have to be arch, you can do either one. We are, Harvest is excited about the pink pucks, uh, again, for um, those type of pink um, overdentures. You don't have to worry about opaquing, uh, whether it's titanium or bone colored material, you would still need to opaque, especially if you're wrapping around 
um, a denture with acrylic. It does come out sometimes. So the pink does alleviate that. And it offers, whether it's surgical guides, whether, you know, there's uh, over denture, um, there's attachments that you can do with it. I mean, really, it's one of those things, if you can think it, you can do it with these type of trilor material. It, it is a hard material that does benefit from the absorption and does lend itself to, a, um, as you see here at the bottom right, which is the the, the kind of the crystal ultra trilore, um, you know, model whereby they, they're doing a substructure and then a superstructure, a uh, substructure from trilore and a superstructure from uh, crystal ultra, which is very popular. It's a different model than what we've just discussed, but nonetheless, it's still a, a popular one. Um, and some, and a lot of folks are even using it for long-term provisionals. Um, you can also, mill that out of, a, you know, a crown for, or a implant or uh, immediate load. And then you would need to just uh, um, stain and glaze with like an optic glaze or something like that. It, Trilor does need to be sealed in the oral environment. Um, an optic glaze or any of the light curing type of glazes really seal it well. Um, and as well, people do uh, removable partial dentures for, because you can really make the clasps um, you know, thinner and allows a little bit of flexibility while the rigidity remains. So there's plenty of indications and plenty of things. It is a wonderful, wonderful restorative options for what we spoke about in this webinar, but just wanted to make you aware that there are other indications that could be used with the trial material uh, from Harvest Dental Products. So with that said, I want to both Cole and I, and I would like to thank everybody for, for spending the time with us. I hope you found of great value with this. And if there are any questions, please feel free to, um, you know, send an email or call you the Harvest Dental Old Full Contour. And I, I wish and hope everybody stays healthy, safe, and, and warm. Hey guys, thank you. Really appreciate uh, the time today. Awesome. Thank you so much.